All right guys, welcome to United by Trucks. Today, we're doing something special. We're walking you through our DIY, I wouldn't call it budget, but I would say this is something that um, is not just so expensive and out of reach, I would say for, for that home garage DIY type builder. So we're gonna walk you through our DIY cooling system today, and we're probably gonna show you some updates to our fuel system as well with the Boyd welding fuel tank. So we're gonna get to that in a minute, but right now we're gonna start right here. I got Mike with me. We're gonna tell you about our DIY cooling system for our 68 GMC that is LS swapped and has a 5.3 with a 4L60. This thing had just a mechanical fan and an old school three row radiator that was in the, in the factory core support. And it had the unsightly tangled up hose that Mike loves so much that runs from the, the passenger side over to the driver's side. I'll throw some, some clips down in here of what that looked like. But I think what we're gonna start with is this radiator that I've talked a little bit about before. It is from CJ Pony Parts. It's specific to a 67, 68 GMC and that it has the quad headlights across the front. We had an aftermarket for support on the truck and we're replacing it with this one since the other one is damaged. We've got our isolators in the bottom and then for the top we've got just your standard uh, radiator retainers I'll call them. They have the isolators already in them and we'll show you how that works with our radiator and our shroud set up. Speaking of shroud, this is a Vintage Motors Arizona fan shroud, electric fan shroud. So this is the top piece that, that basically goes over the radiator. And then removing this fan that we'll talk about in just a second, we have the actual full shroud here. So we're gonna paint this up in just a minute and install it, but we're gonna actually put it together for you in mock-up phase, show you how it goes, and then tear it all back apart, paint it, and then put it back together for the final time. But Mike, while I am tearing open this radiator that I forgot to open, uh, tell everybody about why it's important to have a fan shroud with your electric fans on the front of your radiator. When you have a radiator and you're gonna put an electric fan on it, like if you just attach your electric fan to your radiator without using a shroud, what you're doing is you're just sucking air through the diameter of your fan. So you're not using your whole radiator. So when you put a shroud on it, you basically are forcing the air to travel through the whole radiator to get through the fan. So essentially you're cooling down the entire radiator instead of just one small area. So you really want to run a shroud that covers your whole radiator and you know, obviously is big enough to hold your fans. Speaking of radiator. Look at this shiny thing. So this is the radiator that we're going with and I'm just gonna mock this up right here while we're talking about it. But this is just a, a CJ Pony Parts sort of mid-grade. I think this thing was like 275 bucks. Their aluminum radiator, it's all welded. Um, and it's got your hoses and your steam vent all on the right side here. So I've got an overflow port, I've got a steam vent port, and then I've got my uh, upper and lower radiator hoses. What we're gonna do in addition to this in addition to keeping it cool is we're gonna run this Vintage Motors Arizona fan shroud with the SPAL or SPAL, however you say it, 13 inch fans. So these pull, I think 1700 CFM per fan. We're gonna have two of them. So we'll have you know roughly 3400 CFM of air pulling through this fan shroud, pulling through the radiator into the fan shroud. And we're gonna be using this Mr. Gasket relay and temp sensor setup that we got from Holly. We've got a new partnership with Holly. So Holly supplied us with the relay and temp sensor wiring as well as the spile fans. And like I said, we got this from Vintage Motors AZ. You can check out Holly at Holly Performance online or you can check out Vintage Motors AZ at Vintage Motors AZ on Instagram. We're gonna take a quick break, get ourselves together and we'll come back and uh, put all this to mock all this up on the core sport and show you how it all works. This is our DIY cooling system for an LS Swap C10. You think that went all right? Yeah. I kind of like the part where I left you and you just did the thing and then I came back and it was like perfect timing. And I was like, not screwing it up. <laughs> I don't think. Welcome to Mike and Robbie's angry YouTube channel. I hope you stay there while I go get more bolts. See how badly I'm in frame. Or if so if we're mocking this up here, we got the vintage motors. For mock-up, we're just gonna show it to you with one fan here. Um, Mike is getting that all bolted up and you can see that we're basically just using our upper radiator mounts. They fit perfectly right here 
on the CJ Pony Parts radiator. This thing conveniently has all of the holes. Yeah, and it's already got already all the holes already drilled, which for these fans. Yeah, for these fans. As I mentioned, Vintage Motors provided the shroud and they went ahead and put the holes in and they tell you exactly what fan to use, which I can't remember. I think it's like 224 or the last three digits. Turn around and show the fitment. So you can see on the inside how this bolts up. And a lot of times we will we'll nut cert these, but we don't have a lot of clearance between the fan and the shroud, especially down here at the bottom. And we'll show you how that fits here in a minute. But we don't have a lot of lot of yeah. room, so we're gonna we're gonna just bolt it in like this. Yeah, you really gotta be cognizant of how far your bolts are sticking through because you will tighten it down and jam a hole. In your yeah, and jam a hole right in the radiator. Hold that, sir. Be glad to. And we'll loosely bolt this little guy up here. Or what? I really like the simplicity of this setup. Yeah. Like I said, we're gonna paint it black and make it look at not make it look you know, kind of make it disappear, which is the theme on this truck, in my opinion. <laughs> just a shop truck. We just want things to kind of disappear. We want it to be functional and all that. But so the next move on the shroud, after you put the upper radiator cover on, you just slide it right up onto the radiator here. And it actually bolts right here to this upper mount. So it'll bolt there. And then it also bolts right here in the other uh, upper radiator mount. So if you can see what I'm showing you here up top, we've got one bolt here on this side for this part of the radiator for the this part of the radiator mount, and then the other one is used to bolt both the mount and the upper part of the fan shroud on. Okay, guys. So here it is mocked up. Obviously, we don't have this fan in here, but you can see sort of that tight radius we've got here on the radiator between the you know, the shroud and the, and the radiator. So that's why we're going with those, those bolts instead of nut inserting it on here. But you can see how clean this is. I think it's clean anyway. So three row LS swap, 6772 radiator from CJ Pony Parts, Vintage Motors, 6772 fan shroud. There's also a CJ Pony Parts, Core Sport and SPAL fans from Holly. Okay, so one thing Mike and I, we were about to bust this back apart and we got to talking and we pulled these caps out, which we hadn't done yet. And for the upper and lower radiator hose, you gotta have special fittings. Uh, these are an inch and a quarter NPT. We found some of the fittings on Champion's website. This is likely a Champion radiator. I'm gonna be looking or gonna be buying those fittings off the website. They're actually not very cheap. So this $275 radiator, you know, turns into a $350 radiator, but it still gives us what we need from a DIY budget perspective. So gonna be ordering those so you'll see us screw those fittings in and then be able to attach our hoses to them once we get them. Then we got a pretty sweet setup. We're gonna tear this back apart. Just wanted to show it to you, you know, getting it mounted up, but we're gonna tear it back apart, go spray all this black and come back in here and put it all together and maybe set it up there and show you what it looks like on the front. So let's go do that. Oh, Man, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Here, stand right there and hold that. I didn't get an English confidential speakeasy. And it's just super windy out here. All right, sweet. All right, guys, so we are working on the cooling system today and also going to be refurbing our Boyd Welding 6372 C10 tank. Obviously we got this from Boyd Welding and it's something that literally bolts up the truck's right here to my right. It bolts up uh, in, in between the rear frame rails in the back. This one has clearly seen quite a bit of use. It's been under the truck since 2018 and we've had no issues with it. So I'm really pr proud to report that these Boyd Weldon tanks, they hold up and I've never had to drop it out from under the truck. So that being said, Dave over at Boyd Welding heard about us, you know, refurbing Teddy a little bit. He heard that we pulled the tank and I uh, actually sent him a picture of all the dirt and dust on top of it. But we're gonna get this thing cleaned up today and I've got a box of stuff here from Boyd Welding where we're gonna refurb this tank essentially. We're gonna put a new sending unit and gasket in and we're gonna put a new fuel pump and gasket in as well. This uh, tank has an Aeromotive Stealth 340 pump, which is perfect for a LS swapped truck. 
and it's really quiet. So you hardly even hear the thing running when you've got the key on and it's, it's really, really nice. So let's see, uh, we got a box here from Boyd Welding. Looks like we got a hat and a plethora of koozies, which much appreciated Dave. Some decals and all of that. We'll put those on the, uh, on the forklift. But really quickly, we'll show you the sending unit here. A new gasket, a piece to go around the fuel pump here, and then a whole new fuel pump. This thing's actually full of gas, so just leave it right here on this jack and get it all wiped off, cleaned up, and then start pulling apart the old fuel pump and old sending unit and get going. All right, so first things first, we just got some soapy water, some aluminum tank, so we're just gonna wipe it off with this and see what kind of mess this is gonna make. This is uh, an old t-shirt that we're going to do this with and you can comment down below if you think I should be doing this with something else. This is the part where I get in camera with my shirt off and I go, I was wearing that. <laughs> Man, it's actually coming really clean and this stuff, whatever this is, it smells fragrant. Yeah, I'm going to bring some fish soap because is that doing anything? Yeah, it's wiping off, but you're probably going to need another shirt. I definitely am. Mike, can you take your shirt off? Yeah, Mike, can you uh, take your shirt off? The only thing i got left is plenty of money. Do you want that? No, I'm good. There's that Boyd Weldon logo. That thing has seen some dirt. And some fuel. So just as a reminder, this is the AZ Pro fuel line kit. This is just a Corvette regulator, fuel pressure regulator with their hose and fittings that they supply in a whole kit that you can just buy right off their website. So you buy the whole kit, comes with all the fittings you need, make the lines and hook it all up. So first we'll pull the pump. You can see that, that still looks brand new. Here's our pump setup. So this is what mounts to the top of the, to the rim here. But if you look down on the inside, there's the other piece, this piece here that Mike is opening. Let me show you here. So you can see there's a, another piece that is screwed to the underside of that lip. And it looks just like this. And so it's a retainer. We're gonna remove this. And again, I gotta say thanks to Dave at Boyd Welding for, for making this happen. He clearly stands behind his tanks. So I don't know if this is something that Dave might encourage every time you uh, drop your tank, but let's see how it'd be beneficial. There we go. Guess you want to see what it looks like inside a three-year-old Boyd tank. There you go. These are all hex. Actually, almost four-year-old. So what is it? job right here is to make sure I don't drop this in here. Try to get the gasket. Yes. Look at you, Michael. You want to throw that in here? I don't believe 
Oh, okay. I see don't watch out, old fella. Certainly much better. All right, so now we got the new sender with new instructions. We even got a gas cap gasket at all. Looks like we're going this vertical style sender. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let's try this. this yeah. Because that's where the, uh, the wire is. Yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was like that. That's all right. <laughs> Hold those. Word. All right, so there's that. I got one in there. While Mike's going to get some thread sealant, you can see we got the new pump in. The new positive negative set up there. That's where we'll put our pressure line in. And here's the new sending unit. New style from Boyd, I like that. That'll work out well. So we're gonna put our pressure side line in, our return line, and then get our rollover vent back in. We'll put that in last, but here we go. All right. So we went ahead and disconnected this fuel line. Man, this, everything is just in my way, like when I'm going to... There we go. Looks great, Robert. Good job. All right, you weren't even looking. Check out the Boyd welding tank decal that Anna's going to put on the forklift. Well, here's another. So now that we've got all this retrofitted new fuel pump gaskets new sender gaskets we got our old fittings in line back in place and we're about to hook this back up hey did you level the tripod heck no you did probably not dang it robert Does it hurt? yes Why? matters to mike because the other day when we did all that awesome footage, I leveled the stand perfect. No, you're doing it wrong, Anna. You don't just yank on the thing like that. <laughs> Stop it. Don't just quit. Just leave it alone. <laughs> People. Oh, I see. It's pretty easy, decent on my level. It's in the circle. And I feel like within the circles, that's tolerance for yeah. being level. So we're going to not get Anna to build anything for us. Sounds good. Though she is into trucks it's and pretty, mini trucks. No, it's pretty well in there. Okay, while they can argue about that, I want y'all to see this. This is all back together. Here we go. All right, guys, so we got the refurbished Boyd fuel tank here complete, ready to put back under the truck. New fuel pump with the new wiring, positive and negative there. Uh, pressure side, return side, new rollover. Well, not new rollover vent, but just reinstalled with some pipe tape and then a new fuel sending unit and then we're running as i said before our az pro line kit with the i believe it's a wix regulator corvette style regulator this will mount on the cross member that will be in front of the uh actually behind the tank so anyway we will uh get this back under the truck when it is time but we've refurbished the boyd tank and appreciate dave at boyd welding for sending us all the stuff to do that so We'll jump back on this when it's time. Mike, you ready to get going on this cooling system? Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. All right, here we go. Okay, guys. So we got the vintage motors shroud painted up. Mike got the fans installed, bolted here. We're actually going to be nut inserting the bottom to the to the radiator or to the bottom of the course board. I mean, and uh, we're going to be bolting the top of the shroud right up here to the top. So we're gonna bolt this thing up and forgive all my runs in the paint. It's a quick job, but this is on the inside. The top is a little nicer. And uh, yeah, let's uh, ready to bolt this thing up. Let's do it too. Check, check. Just that we quit fidgeting with everything. There's a random piece of wire on here. It's bothering me. Okay, guys. So we got the 6772 LS swap radiator in, mounted to the Vintage Motors fan shroud with spow fans. 
from Holly Performance. The vintage motors uh, fan shroud can be purchased at the link in the description as well as the radiator. Uh, we'll put a link into the fans as well, but this is our cooling setup. So we've got the fans grounded. We'll run a power wire and relays and all that uh, to it. And then we're going to get the fittings that go here for our, um, for our hoses. And yeah, this is what our cooling setup's going to look like. So we're really excited to run this. We think this is sort of that DIY, a little more budget friendly setup. Uh, I think the, like I said, the radiator was about 300, it'll be about 350 bucks all in with the radiator and the fittings that go here that we didn't know we needed until, until we got, uh, got into it. Uh, the fans themselves are pretty expensive. Um, I think both of them together are probably somewhere in that two to three hundred dollar range. And then the fan shroud itself is actually very cost effective, uh, somewhere in the mid 150 bucks, somewhere around in that range. We're gonna go mount this thing up over there, show you what it looks like, and uh, we'll catch up with you over by the truck. Uh, incoming. Dang, that was almost like it was too easy. <laughs> You've seen it. Sorry, that was a little close. Didn't realize it was gonna be that close. But, I got a clearance we got there. Not a lot. We ain't got a lot at all. <laughs> that would be because my motor is just so far forward. However, we got enough. Unless, is there a pulley getting over into that one? Nah, we're good over here. Yeah, good, we are, we're here, good here too. All right guys, we're gonna bring the lift down so I can kind of show you what this looks like from the top. There's old Michael. Michael Roy, howdy. So like I said, new core support. Here's the fan shroud. I could have done a better job painting that, no doubt about it. Sorry about that vintage motors. We're in a hurry like always. See, I love the way the shroud looks. Radiator, fans. Like Mike was saying, we real tight here, but we got just enough room. You can see the room there and there. I really like the way it looks from a top down. So all that wiring that you see hanging across the front of the motor, that won't be there because that's all part of the harness for the truck and the motor. So we'll get our fittings and then get our hoses on. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of United by Trucks. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at how we're doing our DIY cooling setup on Teddy, our LS-powered 68 GMC. Big thanks to Boyd Welding for the update kit for their tank. We got that all done, and obviously I love this whole setup for the cooling. Yeah, we're going to keep bringing you some updates on this truck. We're trying to drive this thing to Lone Star Throwdown, not this coming Thursday, but the next Thursday. So y'all hang tight. It's going to all come together here really quick. Appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Definitely leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about our cooling setup for this LS. And smash that thumbs up button. That really helps us out and helps with the algorithm. So really appreciate all you guys engaging with our content. We'll catch you next time right here on United by Trucks. Is this Mike's daily rant? Yes, it is. Hit me. If you have a website and you are selling stuff to people, like, I want to come on here and I want to look at this radiator, okay? Mm -hmm. And them stupid little ads pop up and they're like, hey, sign up to our email thing while I'm, like, trying to read something. <laughs> like, it's like 50-50 if I just leave your website all together and go buy something somewhere else. Because nothing <laughs> angers me more than I'm trying to read something and that stupid thing pops up. It's like pop-ups from back in the day. Ugh. Cue the music.